Making a Stuart model steam plant part 16. Machining the top cap for the condenser in the lathe plus drilling and shaping the base. For this job I've decided to use my old Smart and Brown lathe for the simple reason the chuck is much larger. And this chuck is a four jaw self centering chuck and it will easily accommodate this four inch square piece of three millimeter brass. This operation could have been done on the drilling machine, but I have the machinery to do the job properly, so it's possibly a good idea to use it. Once a piece of brass is clamped in the chuck, I use a centre drill to drill the centre of it. I always start off a drilling job in the lathe using a centre drill, and this ensures that the hole is in the middle. If you dive straight in with a twist drill, that will also drill a hole in the centre of the plate, but it's likely to be either not in the right place, not quite in the centre, or maybe not the right size. I could run the lathe at a higher speed than this, but the problem is the belts are currently slack. Before I machine this part, I will tighten the belts. With this Smart and Brown, it's a trade-off between the tightness of the belts and the noise that it makes. Now it's time to drill the hole in the centre of the plate, and this is tapping size for 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. After drilling the hole in the centre of the brass plate, there's a bit of a burr that will need removing. But I thought I would go ahead and tap the hole first. I have a 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch tap in the tailstock chuck, and I'm manually turning the lathe to start with. Then I select the slowest back gear speed, and let the lathe do the rest of the work, and I end up with a very nicely threaded 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch hole in the centre of the plate. In this clip the lathe is running at a higher speed and I'm using a countersink to deburr the hole. And that's it for the machining operation on the plate for the time being. The next thing I need to do is find a way of fixing this in the chuck. So I'll close the jaws and see what happens. And the video is showing this at four times normal speed. In my scrap box I found a piece of studding and a brass nut, so I thought this may hold the part in place. But once I rotated the chuck, I realised that this was not a terribly good idea. A much better idea is to turn up a mandrel and thread it 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. This is a piece of phosphor bronze. And as you can see, with a nice sharp carbide tip tool, the part cuts beautifully. By using my micrometer, which I didn't bother showing, I finally turned this part down to what I need it to be, which is 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. Before threading the part, I drilled quite a deep centre in the end of it. This will take a live centre to hold everything very rigid. Once I start to turn the edges of the plate, I don't want it to move around. After drilling a hole in the centre, with the tailstock die holder, I thread the part. I opened up the die slightly, so this part should be quite a tight fit when I screw the plate onto it. But before that, I need to move the entire part rearward in the chuck. Then the large chuck jaws will support the brass plate. And here is the plate screwed in position on the mandrel. The other reason for using the Smart and Brown lathe is the large chuck jaws will be a good support for the brass when I come to machine it. And here's the plate fitted to the chuck with a live centre in the hole in the end of the piece of phosphor bronze. I could cut the plate now using a shaped cutting tool from the front but I wanted to cut it from the edge. I removed the part from the chuck and drew around the piece of copper tubing, not exactly accurately, it just allowed me to chop the corners off on the bandsaw. After refitting the cut down part in the chuck, it's time to turn it. I didn't really need to do this, but it's just a time saving exercise. And also, cutting a perfectly square piece of metal really hammers the cutting tool. As you can now clearly see, the ring that I drew around the piece of copper tubing is not really in the right place, but it's of no consequence, it was only to allow me to know where to cut the edges. In no time at all, I'm nearly at the finished dimension. When I got it very close to the size that I needed, I noticed that there was quite a lot of swarf hanging off the edge, which I removed with my fingers just to show that you shouldn't do this, it's far easier and safer to use a file. Now it's time to clean up the faces. First of all, I used emery cloth, then a piece of wet or dry sandpaper, and finally, scotch brite. I also used a piece of scotch brite to grip the disc when I removed it from the mandrel to turn it round. I cleaned up the other side in the same way emery cloth, wet or dry sandpaper, and then a piece of scotch brite. 
but I use this piece of Scotch-Brite which is taped to a piece of mahogany. Anything that keeps your fingers away from the chuck is a good idea. For the other side it wasn't very tight on the mandrel so I could just unscrew it by hand. I looked at the part to see which was the cleanest surface and then I turned it round and cleaned up the other side again and this will be the side that is uppermost on the finished condenser. With the top part machined it's time to turn my attention to the base. All I need to do is drill four holes on the marks you can see. A quick check to make sure the holes are in the right place. And after that, using my 4 inch belt sander, I rounded the edges. Then I polished up the base using my polishing spindle, followed by some brasso wadding and then a cloth and it's looking quite good. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.